In this video, I'll be following the peripheral nerve into the upper limb. Now for this, I'll only be looking at the five main branches of the brachial plexus. But if you want to learn about the smaller branches, you can find a video on them just here. As always, if you're drawing along, you can find all of the illustrations in the links below. I'd also recommend using different colours for each nerve, so you can easily match them with their sensory and motor functions later on. First, let's follow the anterior branches of the brachial plexus. Laterally, we have the musculocutaneous. This nerve heads diagonally across the arm, deep to the muscles of the gun show, before reappearing on the lateral aspect of the forearm. At this point, it changes its name to become the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. The median nerve starts by running along the medial aspect of the arm. At the elbow, it heads anteriorly, passing through the cubital fossa, then pierces pronate teres and enters the forearm. From here it runs between the muscles of the anterior forearm and enters the hand via the carpal tunnel. Just before the tunnel, it gives off a palmar cutaneous branch, and just after, a recurrent median nerve heads to the thumb. Finally, small branches run alongside the thumb and the lateral digits. The ulnar nerve also travels along the medial arm. However, instead of moving anteriorly at the elbow, this nerve heads posteriorly, behind the medial malleolus. At this point, the nerve becomes pretty exposed, and in fact, if you've ever banged your funny bone, you'll know just how easily it can be damaged at this point. The nerve continues into the medial aspect of the forearm, and again enters the hand. However, rather than passing through the carpal tunnel, the ulnar nerve travels through a separate fibrous tube named after French surgeon and mutton chop enthusiast Jean Casimir Villard Guion. This is Guion's canal. Finally, the ulnar nerve terminates with small branches to the hand and medial digit. Posteriorly, we have two major nerves. The axillary nerve runs through the armpit to reach the shoulder. Meanwhile, the radial nerve runs around the shaft of the humerus until it reaches the lateral elbow. At this point, the nerve divides into two branches. A deep branch heads posteriorly and runs along the back of the forearm. Meanwhile, the superficial branch continues alongside the radius until it reaches the lateral digit of the hand. Now we have our nerves, we can look at what they supply. Generally, each nerve contains a mix of motor and sensory fibres. Sensation from the nerve broadly matches their location, so the axillary nerve supply skin over the lateral aspect of the shoulder. This can also be known as the regimental badge area after the location of military insignia, or as the dead arm area if you're my older brother. The terminal portion of the musculocutaneous nerve the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm provides sensation to skin on the lateral aspect of the forearm. Next, fibre from the median nerve innervate the lateral aspect of the palm, the palmar surface of the lateral three and a half digits, and their respective nail beds. Sensation to the palm arises via the palmar cutaneous branch, which you may remember isn't passing through the carpal tunnel. So, if a patient have a carpal tunnel problem, it may affect sensation to the lateral digit, but shouldn't impact the palm. The other digit receives fibre from the ulnar nerve. This nerve provides sensation to the palmar and dorsal aspect of the medial one and a half fingers. Finally, the radial nerve supplies skin throughout the upper limb, with sensory fibres passing to the posterior arm, posterior forearm, and the remainder of the hand. Sensation in the rest of the upper limb comes directly from the brachial plexus. Now I won't go into the details here, but if you want to learn more about those nerves, I've added a video in the link below. What about the motor innovation? Well, generally each muscle compartment is innovated by a single peripheral nerve. So the first thing I want to do is add those compartments to our illustration. Starting proximally, we have the deltoid forming the shape of the shoulder. The arm is split into anterior and posterior compartments, and we see the same division in the forearm. Finally, small intrinsic muscles are found in the hand itself. Anterior branches of the plexus 
innervate the anterior muff valve of the limb. So the muftulocutaneous nerve supplies all of the muff valve in the anterior arm. Most of the anterior forearm is innervated by the median nerve, while muff valve in the hand itself tend to be supplied by the ulnar nerve. Posteriorly, the axillary nerve supplies the deltoid, with posterior muscles in the arm and forearm being innervated by the radial nerve. This pattern is a really good basic rule for learning the motor supply of the upper limb. However, there are some exceptions to be aware of. For example, as the ulnar nerve travels towards the hand, it passes between and innervates two muscles in the anterior forearm. So, flexor tarpeal naris and the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus are actually supplied by the ulnar nerve. Equally, the lateral muscles of the hand have a different innervation to the other intrinsic muscles and receive their nerve supply via the median nerve. This group of muscles are known as the loaf muscles and contain the lateral two lumbricals, opponens pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, and flexor pollicis brevis. The latter three muscles form a group known as the thena eminence, and this controls the major movements of the thumb. Motor innovation to this thena group comes via the recurrent branch of the median nerve. This is sometimes known as the million dollar nerve, but if you damage it, and the patient loses those movements in their thumb, you could be food for a million dollars. So that's the torf and function of the major peripheral nerves. You can download a summary of these nerves from the links below, but if you have any other questions or problems, please just get in touch. If you'd like to see how these nerves function in real life, why not try using the median nerve to click on the like or subscribe button. Other than that, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.